has been legalized. And now to the growing acceptance of legalized marijuana across the country. Five states legalize some form. Worst class parents, man. The biggest horse distributor from Amsterdam, known as the minister, because he always wearing black clothes. Klaas Bruisman was born in Amsterdam and the second child of Anton Bruisman, a Dutch entrepreneur, and Gwendolyn Theresa Mary Gamble, a British homemaker. He attended the Blauw Rijgen kindergarten in Amsterdam outside, and then the Sparta School and also in outside. His parents divorced when he was seven years old. From that point forward, his father, housekeeper, took over the responsibilities of raising Klaas and his siblings. Klaas' father was the father of the Dutch soldier rig, the manufacturing car. He was also make Klaas and his three siblings clean the bottles from the factory on Sundays. During his high school years, Brausman started using hashish and later selling it himself. He was arrested for the first time in the 1970s, at the age of 16. In 1974, he opted to forego attending college in order to dedicate himself to the drug trade full-time. Theo Moore became his main business partner and together they set up an organization. Tia is the daughter of a Dutch mobster and Singaporean heroin smuggler. Her grandson was mainly involved with the purchase, transport and distribution of the merchandise. Moore managed the finances. She kept track of income and expenses and was also responsible for paying individuals who were hired to get rid of people who were not following instructions. In 1976, Brownsman was convicted but was later released in 1977. Upon his release, he changed his identity to Franz van Arkel, nicknamed Mama Franz. He also hired professional kickboxer Andre Billerman as head of his security and personal bodyguard. After his release from prison in 1978, he hired A.J. Erka as extra bodyguard. Erka would later go to become his second command and Brownsman's right hand man by this time. Brownsman expanded his smuggling operation, branching out to Germany, Belgium, France, and Scandinavia. In 1979, Brownsman was convicted once again, this time for organizing a large hostage transport from Pakistan. He was released in 1982. In 1983, he was involved in shootout after some members of his organization decided to steal large stockpiles of hostages and go business for themselves. He shot several people and was wounded himself. In 1984, he was sentenced to five years in prison, but he later appealed successfully and the sentences were reduced to three years. During his prison sentence, Bausman's father was battling cancer, visited him and died shortly after. After his release in 1987, Bausman restructured his drug organization and branched out into hotels, casinos, gambling, brothels and other legitimate forms of businesses. Agent Erka replaced the Moor as Bausman's main business partner. The new division explanation of gambling machines. During this period, Andre Bellman was accused of theft. He was brutally murdered by Klaas, and his body was encased in concrete and dumped in the river Wall. By the end of the 1980s, Brausman became the largest drug trader in European history. His organization was generating around a million Dutch guilders a day, roughly $500,000 at the time. Given his large success, Brownsman was thinking retirement to dedicate himself to his passion and hobby of sailing. However, he wanted to write his provisions wrong for 1979 and planned to transport 55 tons of hashes from Pakistan into Holland, a much larger amount than he was arrested for previously. The shipment had a street value of 400 million Dutch guilders, known as 200 million at the time. This jet operation was dubbed the Big Mountain by Brownsman and his close associates. However, the operation was unsuccessful and the shipment was seized upon arrival in the Netherlands. After the failure of the operation, Brownsman started using cocaine and began extorting other Dutch criminals. Brownsman and his gang often hung out in the Amsterdam luxury hotel Jop Jum. In the 1990s, Brownsman and his associate Roy Atkins fought in the brothel after one of their operations had gone sour. Shots were fired but nobody was injured and nobody talked to the police. Atkin was assassinated later that year. A newspaper article in 2006 reported that the true ownership of the brothel had long been in the hands of organized crime figures, beginning with Brownsma, who called it the clubhouse. After Brownsma's death in 1991, on 9th of 27 June, 
1991. Bausma was become involved in verbal argument with Martin Hovland, the former police officer who was now employed by organized crime. Hovland shot Bausma to death in front of the Amsterdam Hilton Hotel at 4 a.m. Hovland was murdered himself in 2004 while on parole.